Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're unfamiliar with me, my name is Brian Mounts. I run TurfMechanic.com and this channel. Today I want to talk about thatch. I've got thatch in my yard. Long-term subscribers of this channel have watched me dethatch this uh, yard with uh, manual means, with a manual thatch rake. I've used electric dethatchers and I've done a series of liquid dethatching products on the lawn. I've had a lot of well-intentioned commenters over the last year and change um, point out the fact that I have thatch and advise me on how to get rid of it. Most people say that you should use an electric dethatcher to run over it to remove the thatch layer. Well, I want to go into that because it's not so simple. All right, I just mowed this grass. My opening sequence, you could see the before and the after. This looks really great. Like, I'm not gonna lie, this looks great. But here's the problem. This is what most video grass YouTubers do. They show you a shot like this, but I wanna show you what happens when I change the angle. Look at that. There's my shadow, let me move. Look at this. This doesn't look nearly as good. Now, you might be wondering, maybe you already know, I got little holes in the lawn. I have core aerated this lawn. I have applied liquid aeration to this lawn. I have fertilized this lawn, and we're all talking just within the past month. I have done everything I can to this lawn to make it its best it could possibly be, but I have not dethatched it. At least I haven't dethatched it this year. Now about two days ago, maybe three days ago, I applied a liquid dethatching product to the lawn. Uh, it does not work in three days. Uh, make sure to go take a look at the archive. I'll link to it if you missed that video. But I wanna explain why thatch removal is a more complicated topic than some people lead you to believe. Now instead of just telling you, I'm going to actually show you. I've got a thatch rake back there. There it is right there, leaning against the wall. I'm going to go ahead and use the thatch rake on a, por a portion of this lawn. I've got an electric dethatcher here. This is the Greenworks. I'm going to use that on a different portion of the lawn. And I've also got a pro plugger. I'm going to use the pro plugger to pull cores on the areas of the lawn that I did not run the dethatching over and on the areas that I did. And I'm going to show you how using these products, these dethatching products, these dethatching pieces of equipment don't get the job done the way people think that they will. All right, here, let me show you what I just did. So here, let me move the thatch rake. Zoom out a little bit. So you can see in this zone, I didn't do anything at all. You can see all this down there. Over here, this is where I use the manual thatch rake. It does look cleaner, and by cleaner, I mean less debris is in there. Plus, we're able to see some of these fibrous stuff. Look at that right there. But here's one of the problems. When you have thick thatch layer, you're literally pulling the grass and the roots up. And look, all of this is still here. If I want to pull that out, I'm 
borderline removing grass. All right, look at that. I just removed that grass. There's a little root down there. A thatch rake is pretty aggressive. And of course, it's very hard to use for a long time because it's manual. And you're ripping chunks of grass out when you actually have real thatch. Now, what I did pull up, if you look at this, look what I pulled up. Does that look like dead grass to you? Or does it look like this fibrous thatch? This is pulling up surface, surface debris. It's basically dead grass. It's not pulling up the thatch. The thatch is still there because it's deeper, it's thicker. It's almost impossible physically to pull this stuff up because it's so tiresome. And if you're pulling it up, you're removing grass. Now here's the plug that I pulled from the area where I use the manual dethatcher. This right here is the thatch layer. I have other videos on this channel where I show these thatch layers. This is not one of the worst areas of my lawn. This is an area that is struggling right now this spring, which is why I'm doing this experiment here. Let me move my shadow out of the way. So you can see that the thatch layer is about to my first knuckle. From the tip of my finger to my first knuckle. So that's like probably three quarters of an inch at least, if not close to one inch. Now over here, this is where I used the Greenworks electric detacher. You can see the little tines here, the marks. That's where the thing, is, it's like a claw, it just scratches the ground and a rotating drum just scratches. And it pulls up a lot. Similar amount, possibly more, I don't know, about the same. And the ground itself looks more like in this striped pattern, but there's still, there's still plenty of thatch down here. Look at this right there. All of this is this fibrous thatch. Well, look what the power rake pulled up, or I should say the electric dethatcher pulled up. This looks remarkably similar to what the manual rake pulled up. It's just the surface debris. So as I pull this and we flip it up so we can see the bottom, look at that, it's still even connected. It's just grass. These tines on the lowest setting, I got this set to low, scrape an eighth of an inch, I don't know, maybe maybe a quarter of an inch below the surface of the ground. I believe it's an eighth of an inch. I'm running on memory here, so don't quote me on that. And these things are flexible. That's what they are. It's not going to penetrate deep enough to get rid of this thatch layer. Now this thatch layer is a little bit thinner. That's maybe about a half to three quarters of an inch. Compare that to the middle core that I just pulled, where I didn't use either the thatch rake or the electric dethatcher. And there's my thatch layer right there. It's about the same. It's not like these did any better. They just removed this surface stuff that you see right in here. Stuff that wasn't removed because I didn't run anything over it. This is not thatch. That's just dead grass. It hasn't broken down. Right now, I came to this realization pretty early on in the 2020 growing season. Thatch rakes are fantastic. They are useful for picking up surface debris uh, if you don't want to use power tools. Electric dethatchers make the job an awful lot easier, especially if you've got a big property and you've got the big, long, monster 12-gauge extension cords to, to run them. But if you have true thatch problems, like real thatch problems, the cores that I just showed you right now, Look at this, I'm like hurting myself. The cores that I just showed you right now are not in uh, the worst sections of my lawn. Now last year, I pulled a core from right, I don't know, right about in there somewhere. And that's one of the worst areas of my lawn. The thatch layer was enormously thick. So when I pulled that core, 
I had already used the thatch rake on the entire yard and the, the layer of thatch was like an inch and a half thick. From that point on, I started using liquid dethatch removal products. I did a series where I tested out three different products and I came to the conclusion of which one I liked the best. And that's the one I'm using this year. I documented five times in the 2020 season applying liquid dethatch, liquid thatch removal products on the lawn. And then about, I don't know, less than a week ago, I applied my first application of the 2021 season for liquid thatch removal. Now I'm gonna pull a core right back here. I have not done this yet. I don't know what it's gonna look like, but my guess is that thatch layer is going to look smaller than the one that I pulled in early July of 2020. Let's find out, I don't know. All right, now mind you, I haven't done this. I haven't pulled a core here in 10 months, but I have applied liquid dethatch regularly since July of last year. Now this thatch layer, first time looking at it here, looks thick. It is thicker than any of the ones that I just pulled over on the other side of the house. That goes past my first knuckle. I probably should have brought a ruler out to, to take a look for sure, but uh, you know, that's over an inch. But I'm gonna set this up side by side with a video that I took last year of me showing off the thatch layer. I'm gonna get the, the lighting good here. I'm gonna set this up side by side and we'll see if anything is different. If anything, is different that grass on top looks pretty good compared to my memory of it last year Do we have roots coming out the bottom and I got roots all the way down there at the bottom so the roots at this point are still probably in bulk here in this thatch layer but there is obviously some root structure that has gone through this thatch layer and has started going into the soil itself and reaching down deep. That's what I want, deep roots. I don't want to say it's my goal in life, but it's pretty important here in the lawn. All right, so this is what I want to leave you with here. Thatch rakes are fantastic for removing surface debris, dead grass. If you got dead grass, matted grass, you want to get rid of it, use the thatch rake. They're going to come up. If you want something powered, use an electric dethatcher. That green works. Sun Joe makes another one. It's, they're basically the same thing. Uh, if you have a deep layer of thatch, you can't rely on those things to do it. Now, their Billy Goat makes a uh, multi-thousand dollar machine. Um, I'm not going to go buy it. But they make an electric dethatcher with little, instead of like that Greenworks has those little flexible prongs that scrape the ground. Uh, Billy Goat makes one that has like really solid tines. Uh, I mean, just like, like a blade that cuts into the ground. Their deepest one goes three quarters of an inch into the ground below the, the surface of the wheels. That's the deepest one that I know of. Most of the expensive uh, scarifiers or power rakes or electric dethatchers, most of them only go into the ground about a quarter of an inch, maybe to half an inch. That billy goat goes three quarters. 
Um, as you can see right here in the hole I just pulled, I've got at least an inch, if not an inch and a half, uh, on that spot. Even the billy goat is not going to come close to getting all the way through the thatch layer. And even if it did, it would be pulling all of my grass off of the ground uh, and the bulk of the root system because it's all in the thatch layer. Liquid dethatch is your friend. If you've got a rhizomatic or a stoloniferous uh, grass type, uh, Kentucky bluegrass, uh, St. Augustine, uh, Bermuda, I mean, mo all of the warm season grasses uh, spread through stolons and rhizomes. Cold season grasses, you've got um, Kentucky bluegrass is pretty much your only one. Creeping red fescue, I guess, is the other, and there are some boutique varieties of uh, turf type uh, that has small, uh, uh, small rhizomes. These types of grasses are going to need some dethatching periodically. It's the fibers, it's those root systems and the stolons and the, and the rhizomes that die off. Those are what get trapped in between soil and foliar leaf canopies. That's what thatch is. Once they get too thick, then they start acting like a sponge, holding nutrients and water way up close to the surface, much higher than we want. We need to feed the soil microbes. Dethatching products, the liquid kinds, do that. They feed the soil microbes and they help those microbes eat the thatch layer away. Basically, the entire lawn becomes a big compost pile, turning those th that thatch layer into new soil. That's what we want. It takes time, but it's pretty cheap. And within a season or two, you don't have to rip out or kill all of your grass to start over. It just slowly improves over time, season after season, with each application. I'm going to leave you with that. There's some links down below, plus an article over on the website where I talk more about this. Please take a look at it. It's a lot harder to rattle off information in video form, in written form. There's a lot of information there. Take a look. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry about the wind here.